rise up if in dead if in fact the dead do not rise. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. If Jesus didn't raise up from the dead, our faith is worthless. Amen. <laughs> because we're saying, by all my faith, so you're my source, my only source. Well, if he didn't raise up from the dead, our faith is absolutely ridiculous. And you're still in your sins. But here's the part I here's the part I don't like. There's a whole bunch of people that, that say, I believe Jesus rose up from the dead, and I'm still a sinner saved by grace. You don't even know you've been changed. You don't even know the resurrected life of Christ has come and set up in your mortal body, and you are not who you used to be. That person died and is no longer existing and will never exist again, and you are a new person in Christ. You're not a sinner saved by grace. You are a son of God, and anything Jesus can do, you can do. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I wish we'd get that old phony. You know, we've got a little shawl on. It's a, it's a shawl of just a false humility walking around. Oh, I'm just a poor old sinner saved by grace. Well, not if you're saved. You're a mighty man of God filled with the resurrected spirit of the risen Lord able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything you can ask or think. Amen? We're not in our sins. Amen? <laughs> we are not in our sins. You know, we're about, uh, we're about, s you, you, wonder, you, you wonder how, you know, we could get to the point of where Bernie Sanders won Alaska. And what else did he win last night? Washington. Washington. There we go. This woman's from Washington. Come up here. I'm going to lay hands on you. Okay. So we wonder how he can win Alaska and, and, and Washington, when he's, when he's not even, a, he, he's a socialist, which means the state governs everything. Yeah, okay. But anyway, but we're about 60 years. Well, I see, 1962, we said you can't pray in the church. And the church stepped back like, like we, we didn't have any sense. And we don't pray in school. And we don't teach about God in school. We teach about evolution. We teach about us being developed from apes. Now, either the word of God is true, and every word is true, or evolution is true. But they cannot both be true. Amen? But we're, you know, we're 60-plus years into this thing, and that's how, you know, faith comes by what? Faith comes by what? What's every college teacher? That, uh, in 1973, they were teaching me, you're an idiot if you believe there's a God. And that was that, that was that long ago. And so now we're these generations in where everything's up to the genius. Everything, we worship the brain. We worship the creature more than the creator. But God says, I haven't changed. And if you want, if you want to get, if you really want to go into places of superior life, believe in me because I'm a supernatural God. And now I raised up a man from the dead. And if you believe in him, I'll give you his resurrected spirit. And you will walk in every promise I made to him now. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I pray we start walking it out. All of creation's waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. And we're, the best we're doing is praying over our meals. Lord, bless this food. He said, I'll bless that food, and I'll bless you everywhere you go. My favor's on you. I'll open doors no man can open, and I'll shut doors nobody can close. Praise the Lord. I'm a God who can do all things. I'm a God who is a creator, and I'll create blessing and favor around you everywhere you go. Amen? Then also, those who have died, those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. Anybody you know that died, they're gone. Good to know you. Bye-bye. A life gone, never to be seen again. You love your mom? Is your mom gone? You love your dad? Is your dad gone? Bye-bye. Never see you again. Really loved you. Wish it wasn't this way. If Christ didn't raise from the dead, those who have fallen asleep are gone. 
even if they were believers, even if they were Christians. If in this life, if what we're doing right now in these earthen vessels, if in this life only we have hope in God, if it's just for here and now, we are all men of the most pity. We're a bunch of pitiful people believing a, a, a fable, believing a fairy tale. Oh, I wish I could see my daddy. Oh, I'd like to see my mom. I wish I could see my husband. But they just passed. And this is just a bunch of flesh. But here's the truth. But now, <laughs> but now, Christ is risen. What, what, tense it, what, what tense is is? I'm not doing the Bill Clinton thing. What tense is is? What is is mean? Right? What what is what is what is is? Present tense, past tense, future tense. Christ is risen. Hallelujah! He's alive right now. Glory to God. Anybody that you know that died, that fell asleep in the Lord, they're not dead. Their body's sleeping, but they're alive and well. Praise the Lord. Their body's laying in the dirt. The God said, "I'm gonna resurrect that dirt one of these days." All of creation. When I come back. When I come back, everything that ever was dead will spring back to life. Praise the Lord God Almighty. But know this, that's on the earth. That Christ has risen to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. There's a place where there is no death. There's a place where there's no variableness or shadow of turning. There's a place where it's life, life, life. Everything's life. That's where these people are. Who are in it. If you are in the Lord, you cannot die. It's impossible for you to die because Jesus died for you. Jesus died as you, and you're a brand new creation, and his spirit is alive in you, and God cannot die. Amen? You say, well, how'd Jesus die? If God can't die, how'd Jesus die? Because he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, and now I'm a man, and I'm the most sinful man because I've taken on the sin of the whole world, and I'm going to die the death, and my soul is going to be made a sin offering. <laughs> But after three days, glory to God, I'm going to raise up my sins, your sins, everybody's sins, stays in the bowels of hell. I'm raising up. Say, Jesus has risen. Jesus has risen. Better say this. Say, Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. He's, alive. he's alive. Say, he's alive. He's alive. Right, now. right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, all this teaching stuff, uh, it, it's a, you know, you could, you could be wealthy, you can have... You can have wealth beyond anybody's imagination, and you'll still die. You'll still die poor and begging because you know, man, I, the, the, I, I'm at the end, and now that I have nothing to grab a hold of. My money won't do me a bit of good. My big houses and my big cars, they won't do me a bit of good. But if you know the Lord, you're saying, Lord, I had it good here on earth, but guess what? I want to see that mansion that you've got ready for me. You said, in my Father's house are many mansions. I want, I want to see that. I want to see you first, Lord. I bow to you. You're the King of glory. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And your mansion will be the least because when he starts showing you his whole creation, you're just going to go, this is incredible. This is incredible. And then when you see these people that you love that are with him, and they start walking towards you, and their faces are beaming like Jesus' face. And they say, welcome home, praise the Lord, how's this? You say, glory to God. This is better than I can imagine. I, hallelujah. Amen? Okay, praise the Lord, God's good. Look at, uh, look at John 3.3. Uh, 3. You know, we're living in crazy times, aren't we? There goes Pam. Bye-bye, Pam. I tell you, it's easy to offend people, isn't it? <laughs> but you know, we're living in crazy times, like Brussels. Is that not crazy? Is that not crazy? Just to strap a bomb on your chest in the name of God and go blow up a bunch of people and to say, well, here's what my God says. My God is ours. And he says, 
if I blow myself up, I'm going to be in paradise, and I'm going to have 21 birds. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I pray you get rid of all that fleshly stuff and shake that off. There's one true God, and anything else that's calling your name is an imitation. He's an, he, he is a, he, and he, all he's out to, is, to do is deceive. Amen? And then, like in Spencer this week, I mean, I see this when I'm in South Carolina, you know. So you got a one-year-old baby laying in a front room, laying in a, and I know that was probably a party house. I don't know, not, not really, but I mean, it sounded a little out of order. But a baby laying in her crib in the front room, and sometime between 2 in the morning and 8 in the morning, somebody just takes that baby out, and then they find it down on White River somewhere. I'm telling you, we're living in treacherous times. And this is not, look, I'm, well, the only thing I'm telling you is, as we're getting ready to manifest as the sons of God, the enemy's manifesting as sons of evil. But I'll tell you what, God uses people, and the enemy uses people. And those thoughts for those guys over in Brussels, those weren't casual thoughts, just I think I'll strap a bomb to my chest and walk to an airport and blow a bunch of people up. The devil's come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come to save you. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And I'm greater than the devil, and you're greater than the devil, and he's underneath your feet, but you don't know who you are, so I'm going to try to tell you who you are so you don't have to put up with this stuff while you're on the earth. Amen? And that, those thoughts that whoever took that baby, whether it was that 22-year-old or whoever it was, there wasn't just thoughts that just came, take that baby out, take that baby out of the crib, take it down to the river, suffocate that baby. I'm going to tell you, these are demonic thoughts, and you better quicken yourself up. When the devil says you're sick and you ain't going to make it, you need to come back. By his stripes, I am healed. You can't let that stuff just flood through you. You can't always be around negative people and you be positive. Sometimes you got to say, you got to go. We can't even talk together. You know, I've listened to this stuff for 30 years. Uh, let's, let's make a pact. Let's don't talk anymore because I can't take any more of your negativity. Why, wow, that's rude. Well, it may be, but I've got to try to get something done on the earth, and I'm, I'm running out of time, and i got to believe what God says. I don't want to argue about, is God real? He's real. I know he's real. My Jesus was dead, and now he's alive, and now he dwells in me. And if you don't believe that, I hope you believe that because I want you to live forever. But you're not going to convince me he's not alive. Glory to God. Amen. You got to stand on the word of God. Jesus answered and said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. See, we can see with our physical eyes and we see everything that's going on. But Jesus said, Unless you're born again, unless you're born again from resurrection life, you can't see what God sees. God sees all kinds of opportunity, God doesn't see fear. God has no fear. Perfect love has no fear. God only sees that which is possible in him. And his viewpoint is totally different from the view of the world. Amen? And you can be a genius and not see what God sees. But God says, but if you're born again, that's where you need it. You, you need to see out of that realm. Amen? But you can't see unless you're born again. Who's born again in this place? Then you start saying, Lord, give me revelation. Let me see what's available. Let me see what's possible. Let me see the life I can live. Glory to God. Let me not be depressed. Let me, let me not be fearful. Let me not be worried. Lord, let me be bold as a lion. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. I just want you to know, Jesus could see both kingdoms. Amen? Because he was born from above. Amen? He was the word and he was God and he, now he became flesh. He could see both kingdoms. Guess what? If you're born again, you can see both kingdoms. You can see what God sees. You can see something. You can see a rock. <laughs> and God saw a rock when there was a million and a half Jews walking across the desert. And God says, let water pour. Is that me? Let water pour out of that rock. Amen? Amen? God, all things are possible with God. All things are possible with God. Okay, Matthew 9, 18. God's got this offer to you. Say this, God open my eyes. Are we losing total power? That's not good. Okay. Because it, once you can see, you can have it. Amen? 
How many pray for something for years and not get it, but then when you start believing for it, then you get it? Listen, God's a God of faith. I'm going to tell you this. He crucified Jesus in faith. Amen? And Jesus took your sin in faith. How would it be for the Lord to take all your sins in faith and nobody believe in him? Do you think there's people that's not going to believe in him? He took their sin in vain. Not that, it, not that he, do, he doesn't want them to receive it, but they, can't, they won't believe it. I'm going to tell you, every promise God's got to you, he wants you to have it. So then Matthew 9.18 talking about Jesus. And while he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay hand, your hand on her, and she will live. Is that faith? <laughs> Is that faith? I mean, he, he, he knew that was God in the flesh. And what, what a faith-filled statement. My daughter just died, but I know this, you can raise her up. Glory to God. That's faith talking there. Okay, let's go on to the next. We got another one? Yeah, let's go to 23. So when Jesus came into the ruler's house, and he saw flute players and a noisy crowd. Wait, I'm going to tell you, that's the atmosphere we're living in. There's a bunch of noise, but it got nothing to do with resurrection life. There's a bunch of noise about economies, wars, rumors of wars, everything, everything, everything. But the, really the only thing is Jesus has risen from the dead. And he said, I, I offer you my kingdom on the earth right now. Amen? Praise the Lord. <laughs> but the, you got to watch all the noise because all the noise is not from God. And he, and he said, make room for the girl is not dead but sleeping. Now I'm going to tell you what, that's a lie in the natural. If you're just looking through eyes, normal eyes, that's a lie, isn't it? That girl was dead. She was dead. What did her dad say? My daughter's dead. But Jesus is seeing from the eyes of the spirit and the eyes of the flesh. So he's walking in there, and he's going, she's not dead. She's asleep. And they ridicule him. I'm going to tell you this right now. You start moving in any kind of level of faith, and you'll have a bunch of people ridicule. Let them ridicule. Let them ridicule. You, you believe God and let him bless you. And let them ridicule you. But you live a blessed life. Amen? Because men aren't going to bless you. And if men start blessing you and you get more blessed than they are, they'll try to take it away from you. But when God blesses you, you're blessed. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Amen. But that's a lie in the natural, but it's not in the... Look. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. He said, well, he hadn't even risen from the dead yet. He's still the resurrection. That's what he said at Lazarus too. I am the resurrection. I am the life. Eternal life is in me. That's why he said, you've got to be born again. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray, I, pray, just, I pray you just get excited about who God says you are. Amen. And, and start believing it so that you can walk it out. We don't need faith when we get to heaven. We want to walk it out here. How many want how many wants everything God has for you in the earth? Well, if you didn't raise your hand, I, I gotta ask why. You know what, what do you not want that he has for you? Amen. So they ridiculed him. Do we have one more verse? Is that it? That's it. Amen. Well then go to no go to twenty five. But when the crowd was put out, I'm going to tell you, sometimes you just got to say, you got to quit talking that. You got to quit talking that way. Oh, my back hurts. I mean, you wouldn't believe how many people I run into. Some of them more than one. Oh, my back's killing me. You know, you know what they ought to say? Mm, by his stripes, I'm healed. <laughs> you say, oh, man, you ain't looking healed. Well, just wait around for a while, amen? I, I'm just saying, you know, we say this stuff that God doesn't say, and we want the results. We want to say just anything. Well, it doesn't matter what comes out of my mouth. I'm just like a, you know, I'm like a 
a, a bird, you know, I'm just like a big, big old bird just yakking all the time. Say what God said. Find stripes on him. Well, we, we'll never get ahead. We're never going to get ahead. Every time we get ahead, something breaks down. Every time we get ahead, car breaks down. Every time we get ahead, washer breaks down. Quit talking that stuff. Amen? He became poor that I might be rich. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Amen? He said, well, I'm just a poor preacher. He said, yeah, I know. I heard you on the radio last week. No. You can't say stuff like that. Amen? you got to say what God says. This is not a game. This is, look, this is not positive thinking, and this is not a game. This is resurrection life, and it's the truth of God. And if you walk in it, you'll get the fruit. If you walk in it, you get the spoils. If you, if you contradict it and you say other things, you're going to pay the price. Not because God doesn't love you, because God says, say what I say. Say what I say, and you'll get what I've got. Amen? But you know what we do? We say what we see. We say what we see. We look around and we say what we see. But what you need to do is say what God says, and then his truth overtakes what you see. Amen? And so he put the crowd. Now, now you think Jesus was rude? No, he said, no, I, I'm not going to do a miracle with a bunch of unbelievers here. So you got to go. Get out. Bye-bye. So he put them out. Then he went in, and he took the, the girl. He took her by the hand. He said, girl, now you walk. And she raised her hand. Jesus is right here. Jesus is right here. Right now. And whatever's going on in your life that doesn't look like resurrection life, you start speaking that. Amen? You say, well, I don't know about my, my kids are so rebellious. I just don't think there's any hope for them. Yeah, there's hope for them. Jesus rose up from the dead, and Jesus loves them. And you start speaking. Call those things that are not as though they already were. Yeah, I know, but she's talked back to me. You know, a lot of this stuff is just us not parenting. I mean, we can blame it on the devil, but I tell you what, a lot of it's just not, not calling it where it's, not calling it when it is. You let it go and let it go and let it go, and then there's no correction. You know? And, but sometimes you got to correct. <laughs> Amen? So you do. You just do. Why, do you, why do you have to do that? Why? Because God said that's what you have to do. He said the rod won't kill them. Sometimes you have to do it. But what we do, we let them get up to about... 16, 17, 18, and then there are wild as to matches, and then we go, oh, my God, what happened? Well, what happened was you turned a blind eye to it all those years. But so when they get, you know, then you got to say stuff to them in the love of the Lord, but you got to cut through that old demon spirit. Amen? The Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It will divide between the soul and spirit. There's a lot of people saying, well, you know, I want to tell you this. Right now, in this society, right now in the United States of America, almost everything that God says is, we're saying you can't say that or it's illegal. You've got to be politically correct. You've got to come into agreement with that. Or we will punish you. And you know what I say? I'm going to serve the living God. Praise the Lord. Amen? Okay, 2 Timothy 1.10. But has now been revealed by the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has abolished death. He brought the power of death to nothing. In true reality, he's brought it to nothing. And you say, Kathy, you say, well, what about my mom and dad? They died. No, their bodies are sleeping, but they're with us. Would I know him if I'd seen him? You absolutely would. Did Jesus know Moses when he met with him on the Mount of Transfiguration? Not only did he know him, but the three apostles that were up there, they knew him. And not only that, they knew Elijah. <laughs> How could they do that? It's God. Amen? It's just God. Praise the Lord. Amen? But... Jesus has abolished death, and he's brought life and immortality to light through the good news. I pray light. I pray you know you have the light of God on you. I pray you know you have the immortality of Jesus on you, that you don't have to fear anything. 
Perfect love casts out all fear. Amen? That you don't have to fear. But I'll tell you a lot. Of, here's, here's, here's what the enemy's doing now. People don't even fear death. They fear life. Well, I don't know if I can make it through. Don't know if I, I don't know if my prosperity is going to continue. I worry about this. I worry about this. I, I worry about everything. They don't, even, they don't even get to the point where they deal with the death. Well, let, let me tell you this. Deal with death first and then back it down. Say, I'm not afraid to die in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And see, we're coming to that because the devil is an imitator. He's not a creator. He's only an imitator. He's a copycat. And, and, and he sees the church rising up to the place where we're going to have no fear. And so what's he do with the Muslims who are serving a false god, who are serving a spirit of the devil? They'll strap bombs on themselves to kill. But he sees the church rising. So he said, I'm going to bring a bunch of Muslims in, strap bombs on them, and th they're not afraid to die because they believe the lie. But the truth is, we are fearless. We're the sons of God. He's bringing us up. We're not going to fear anyone, and we're going to see the glory of God manifest in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. I don't know what you want out of life, but God's got it for you. You say, well, I just want a nice house. You can have it. Amen. Well, I just want a good pair of shoes. There's no problem. Whatever you want, God's got it. Say he's my source. He's my source. But he's got so much more for you, and he's got eternal life, and he's got victorious living in front of you, but you can't walk it out in fear, and you can't walk it out in anger, and you're not going to walk it out if you don't believe it. Say, I'm a man of faith. I'm a man of faith. You're a faith person, amen? God loves you, and he says, all I ask you to do is believe me and walk it out. So what, how do we fight the good fight of faith? That when, he, when the enemy comes against a promise, you stand on that promise and you don't waver. You say, no, I do believe. No, I am the righteousness of God. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave.